So we're going to identify our percent, our base, and our amount. Okay, the percent is, again, we're trying to find the percent, so that must be our unknown. The base, remember, is what we started with. So it says it dropped from 650 to 525. So what was the original amount? That's what the base is. The original amount. And the original amount, since it dropped from 650, that must mean 650 is our base. Okay, it dropped from 650, so 650 is our base. The amount is the amount of decrease. How much did it go down? So I want to know the difference of these two. So I'm going to have to say 650 minus 525. And if I subtract 650 and subtract 525, I get a difference of 125. So 125 represents the decrease. And 125 represents the decrease, and that's our amount. How much did it go up or how much did it go down? That's the amount. So we now have our percent as our unknown. That's what we're looking for. The base was 650. That's the original amount. What, where did we start? Where did we start out? And the amount is the difference from where it started and where it ended up. And the difference of where it started was a difference of 125. Now we're going to take this and put it in our proportion formula. Now that we've identified this, the problem we've already dis or, let's see, dissected the problem. So now we can just use this information to solve our problem. Amount over base is equal to the percent over 100. So the amount was 125 over the base, which was 650, is equal to the percent, which is what we're looking for, over 100. And remember, to solve this, we cross-multiply, so we get 125 times 100 is equal to 650 times x. Cross-multiply. Now, 125 times 100 is 12,500, and 650 times x is just 650x. Now, we divide by what's with the unknown, so we divide both sides by 650, and if we take 12,500 and divide by 650, we come out with, I come out with 19.2307 on my calculator. And that's what I get on my calculator. Okay, now, you may not have as many digits or you may have more depending on your calculator. But the problem says we just want to round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So we're only interested in the first decimal. So we want to know, is the number after this 2 big enough to change it, or is it going to stay the same? Well, since 3 is less than 5, the 2 is going to stay the same, and we get 19.2% decrease. That means that the attendance at the park dropped 19.2%. And again, we round it to the nearest tenth. Remember, we do not round unless we're asked to do so. We do not round an answer unless we're asked to do so. We get leave it in fraction form or as a repeating decimal, but we do not round it unless we're asked to round it. Okay. Now it's time for some practice problems. Time for you to try it on your own. Okay, the first practice problem is a family's electric bill decreased from $60 per month to $52.80 per month. We want to find the percent decrease in the family's electric bill. I think this is supposed to be apostrophe S. Yes. Okay, a family's electric bill decreased from $60 per month to $52.80 per month. We want to find the percent decrease in the family's electric bill. And let me repeat that one last time. A family's electric bill decreased from $60 per month to $52.80 per month. Find the percent decrease in the family's electric bill. And that's our first practice problem. The second one is 
the average price of gasoline rose from 92 cents to $1.15 in four months. What was the percent increase in the price of gasoline? You know, we've seen an increase around here. You know, as soon as summer comes, you know the price is going to go up. So that's because you travel more during the summer. So they just automatically go up for some reason. And again, the average price of gasoline rose from 92 cents to $1.15 in four months. What was the percent increase in the price of gasoline? So the average price of gasoline rose from 92 cents to $1.15 in four months. What was the percent increase in the price of gasoline? And now you want to stop the tape and work these problems and then come back and check your answers. If you have questions, make sure you ask someone in the lab for some help. Okay, the answers to these two practice problems was the first one was 12%. There was a decrease of 12% in their electric bill. And the second one, there was an increase of 25% in the gasoline price. What a whopping change. The increase, the increase was 25%. Now, if you had problems, Make sure you go back and check your arithmetic. Was it your arithmetic that gave you the problem, or did you have a problem setting it up? If you have questions, make sure you go to the math lab and get some help. Okay, this concludes our lesson on percent increase and percent decrease in problems. Now notice that some of those were ones that we that have very applications for us, an electric bill, the gas increases, um, sales, depending on what line of business we go into. So we really, it's something we're going to use all the time. It's something that we may want to look at in our own budget. Are we spending more for food now? You know, or are we, what's the reason that there's an increase? How much of an increase? Is it really worth worrying about? That's something that we have to decide. And, you know, it depends on what we're looking at. So at this point, any kind of increase, and remember, the amount is always going to be the amount of increase or the amount of decrease. The base is always what you start with.